So, in the middle of the last episode, I said I was going to tell you about something if I remembered. I didn't remember, but I actually rewatched that my reaction just now to try to remember what I was going to say. Because I didn't remember what I was going to say. And I remember what I was going to say. Like I said, don't get old. <laughs> so, what I was going to talk about is I like it when you strategically organize things, your, your story. So that two important characters only meet once. And... It's a climactic meeting, right? Because you can kind of undercut the effect of... Like, it's kind of like if you have Batman and Superman in a movie together. If they hang out every third scene, the entire movie, there's nothing special about them being in a movie together. Now, I know there's been a movie where they're together, but the, I, most of my life, they, they had never been in a movie together. So that was a big deal, right? So... What you would want to do in a situation like that, say you have a Batman and a Superman and they've never been in a movie together before and you're going to be the first person to put them in a movie together, you'd want to have that be really interesting and exciting. And So you don't want to do it in the first five minutes of the movie. You want to do it about halfway through the movie and then maybe get at the end or maybe just at the end is when they finally meet. It's the thing. It's, you've got two characters and you've made it so that the audiences once these two characters being seen together, and you hold on to that for a long time. Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and Heat, another case of that, right? I think they only have one scene where they were actually talking to each other. They had an action scene or two later, but like one scene where they're actually just talking to each other. This here, like for a long time, we've been anticipating Luffy meeting his shadow self. And they did it at the perfect time. One of my favorite examples of this was Needful Things. You have the big bad in the, in the novel Needful Things, and you have the, the protagonist in the novel Needful Things. They don't meet until like one of the final chapters. They never share any screen time, quote unquote, since it's a novel. I don't know about the movie. But they never share any screen time in the novel until the very end. In fact, he's, he stops by the uh, store a couple times. Trying to meet him, he wanted to find and investigate what is this new person who set up shop in my town? Who is this person? But the store is closed the couple times he goes by, right? So it's interesting. And, and I think that the, the Big Bad also mentions he's eager to meet this person. And so they built it up in such a way where you're really anticipating this interaction with them at the end of the novel. Whereas if they'd had a couple scenes together early in the novel, you wouldn't feel that way. So I just think it's cool, man. Like, that, that's one of the things, Needful Things is a middle-of-the-road book for me. Kind of obvious, kind of paint-by-numbers. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's the most classic example, but it's been done so many times before in Twilight Zone and some of these other uh, mediums where you get, you know, be careful what you wish for. You get something, but it's a cursed object. Rick and Morty made fun of it. But so it's just a middle-of-the-road story, but I love that aspect. That you can have a protagonist and antagonist not cross paths until the very end. I like that. I just think it's cool. Another good example is X Files. Mulder and the cigarette smoking man do not share a scene together in the entire movie, the first X Files movie. They don't share a scene together, but they both have a lot of impact on each other. I just think that's cool. At any rate, let's go ahead and get into this. And hey, we actually have a cue point here. Yeah, they didn't screw it up two days in a row. You know where we are? You know where we're going. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's right. I like how one-sided this fight was. Considering how powerful Ors is, Sometimes you just want the catharsis of it not even being a fair fight or a close fight. It's just a stomping out. I guess, really, the big question left is what is Bartholomew going to do? Because I said in the last episode, forget about him. Let's just, if he wasn't around, how would I feel? Well, he is around. So how do I feel about him being around? I think he might be weirdly okay. It might be a situation where it's like, hey, man. It looks bad for him to defeat two warlords, but we're going to keep this one a secret and just say Moria died in, on the toilet or something, right? I think he's going to cover it up because the loss has been had. Moria didn't want you, he didn't, he insisted you not participate. 
So I think it's going to be a cover-up this time. Don't take credit for this one. Now, when he defeats the third warlord, then we'll be talking about something. Get him out of here. Get him out of the paint. <laughs> He's out, man. Time for a two-day nap and then get up and eat half the meat that's, that's around. <laughs> get him out of here. <laughs> Bitch ass. For a warlord, I hate how much of a craven coward he was, man. Running away from a fight. Yeah, it's just pathetic. <laughs> exclamation point. Yellow exclamation points everywhere. I guess he is done. He's done. Okay. Do we get our shadows back? I want to see that happen. <laughs> yeah, he's... He, I mean, he was, he was over... Used. So just another Tuesday for him. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. The sun's come up. What's happening with these shadows? <laughs> yeah. Just answer the question really fast. Who's left? Nami and Usopp. That's about it. Do you need to actually kill him? Oh, so you need to beat him until he says it. Okay. Get over there and handle that. Usopp and Nami are going to have to do this one. Just keep beating him until he says it. Shit. That's uh, Kuma, isn't it? Great, now what? No, that is that is that or standing back up? Shit, I effing knew it. I knew he wasn't finished. He takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Mother effer. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know what the hell they're going to do now, man. They done shot their what? You mother effer. I guess not. Yeah, that's it, man. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Like, obviously the Straw Hats don't all die. Or four of them don't die. Like, But I don't know how we get to that point where they're okay, right? Yeah, you better go hide. <laughs> Wait, he's back up? <laughs> Let me finish the job. <laughs> Don't care. Dude, Zora's a badass. Now she wants to marry him. She's going to get rejected again. Hell, I almost want to marry him. I love that dude. <laughs> Shit. Maybe they have their shadows back somehow. What is happening? Let's split this scene. Sounds like they're from the 70s. What the hell is going on? Did they get their shadows back? Is that why they suddenly have some spice left? These people should be unconscious, man. <laughs> hey, uh, Robin's up too. Yeah, they got their shadows back, man. That's that's the only explanation. <laughs> up, like I said, like a toddler. Up, up. <laughs> uh. 
Guess everybody took the, uh, everybody ate their Wheaties and spinach this morning. Find some more salt. <laughs> oh, they got we're all in our spots. We planned it out. <laughs> I didn't think they run. I thought they may have done a strategic retreat. That's different than running. Now we're going to finally gang up on this son of a bitch. <laughs> Tired as hell. <laughs> Are they going to find more salt? Hey, there is finally there is a room with uh some with a roof left, I guess. Maybe it's ocean water. You're gonna get a pipe from the ocean to spray it in this. I'm telling you, I'm obsessed with this ocean water plant, man. Until he's defeated, I wanna see it. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to channel the pipe. Phrasing. Oh, no. This is uh, Steps. <laughs> He's pretty frisky for a skeleton. Yeah, man. You're, dude, you're about to get worked. At least uh, Moria is unconscious, right? He, we don't have to... <laughs> I can't even do it that annoying. Mine's pretty annoying, but I can't do it that annoying, right? Ish. <laughs> I crank it like mad. <laughs> Put that elbow grease in there. They're going to freeze him? Maybe that's what's happening. They're going to freeze his ass. Aha. Cold air. Gotcha. Water plus cold air. Yeah, okay. Freeze him in place. He's a butterfly pinned to the, the wall, right? <laughs> well, shit. That's right. Just like last time. <laughs> well, I think we got this in hand. I'm feeling pretty good. Now, what's uh, Bartholomew going to do? I ain't forgot about him. What are we going to do, though? <laughs> up, up. <laughs> Third gear. Oh, shit. He's coming for that ass. Those are some big ass hands, man. What are your intentions with those hands? Oh, yeah. Wrecked. Slice and dice. Cut him out of there. I kind of like Ors in a way, but it's probably just because Luffy's personality is shining through, right? If he didn't have Luffy's personality, he probably wouldn't be fun at all. So, you know, screw him. Get him out of here. When did they scheme all this? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Oh, shit. I didn't know this. Oh, shit. They're, they're trying to break his back. I got you. Don't matter how big you are if you have a broken back. 
Eat my extra large bazooka. <laughs> Come and get it, bitch. Uh oh, it ain't working. He's getting wrecked, man. Yep. He's going to be mad at his shadow. When he comes back, it's like, don't you ever leave me again. Back-breaking move. Crack? That's not a soothing snap of the back, I'm telling you, man. That's right. Shatter that shit. Get him out of here. For good. <sighs> now he really is tired. He's going to need a... World's longest dad nap after that one. <laughs> you better run. Just saying. Hell yeah. Time cut. But no, you still gotta get your shadows back. We do not have time for a time cut. It won't be Luffy doing it though. Somebody climb up in there. I guess Zoro can do it if he has anything left. Beat the shit out of him until he gives up the ghost. <laughs> Snapped Snapped his neck. Or his back, you know. I thought she was dead. Didn't she get crushed with the, the doctor? Are they going to walk this back? That the doctor didn't get crushed? <laughs> Man, she's creepy. Oh, yes, this dumbass. Oh, wait, that's what he was talking about with the rudder. I wonder what he's trying to warn uh, Moria about. It was the fact that they were going to wander out of the, the fog, right? Okay, that's what he was talking about. They did pay it off. I just didn't make the connection. Somebody just heard him torture the... <laughs> hey, I was just talking about him being tiny. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. When he goes in the third gear, he gets tiny. That's right. I keep forgetting. That's how he gets tiny, by going to third gear. Dumbass. He's awesome. <laughs> Give up the ghost. Hey, uh, anybody want to do something about this? Who's going to torture the, the Mario, whatever his name is? Are we just going to sit here and die? What's it going to be? He has his shadow back. So he's not going to die. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. They really want to make everything... Uh... Wait till the very last second to do everything, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to punch you and keep punching you until you say what we need to say. Here's your script. Shit. What's it going to be, bitch? <laughs> well, they're happy for now. Wrecked. Kick his ass. He ain't gonna do it. He's an arrogant prick. Yeah, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Tiny Luffy's hilarious. Right. Hey, man, they worked your ass. 
And it's not as sexy as it sounds. <laughs> it's trashed. <laughs> Even his little voice. <laughs> not going to happen. See, it's not threat of death. It's threat of in eternal torture, right? A pretty decent crew, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're making little Luffy cry, man. Look at this. Y'all gonna die. Somebody do something. Because you're an asshole, that's why. He isn't. He has his flaws. Eating off my plate being one of them. But he's not an asshole, so it's not comparable. I see. I see. Somebody kick his ass real fast. <laughs> Is he bringing his men to him or something? Yeah. I think so. Oh, I see. He's he's leveling up essentially. He's sucking out all the shadows. Yeah, he's sucking out all the shadows so that he can level up. Right, gotcha. They're useless right now. You might as well take the power of the shadow. Gotcha. final boss. He'll be even more dangerous than Orr's was. And that was pretty damn dangerous. Hundred thousand. Oh, he got hurt too. Yep, get him out of here. Oh, yeah. Old Milton or whatever the hell his name was. Level up. Is your willpower strong enough to handle this, though? Is he going to explode? Oh, shit. He's transforming, man. Jesus. He's about to bust up out of his geranimals, man. <laughs> A thousand. <laughs> Well, shit. Great. That's just awesome. <sighs> just when you think you're out, they pull you back in. 